Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a review for you uh, of these Intermountain uh, high-level Santa Fe passenger cars. Uh, I have I tried to research online and I didn't see any uh, detailed reviews, at least not on YouTube, uh, of these cars. So I figured I would make one uh, just to share with you guys in case you guys are interested and or weren't even aware that these cars existed. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's go through some history. The El Capitan was a streamlined passenger train operated by the Santa Fe between Chicago, Illinois and Los Angeles, California. It offered a cheaper way for fast traveling, having all coach, non-Pullman service, but still on the same fast schedule as the railroad's premier super chief. It was also the first train to receive the pioneering high-level equipment with which it would become synonymous. The first test high-level coaches entered service on the El Capitan in 1954 and were immediately successful. Santa Fe ended up ordering a total of 49 cars, enough to make 5 sets, which were all delivered by 1956. They were known to be very comfortable even at high speeds, yet very compact, able to carry even more passengers on fewer cars compared to prior consists. Amtrak inherited the entire fleet in 1971 and continued to use the equipment. In 1979, the first Superliners entered service, replacing the Highliners, and Amtrak gradually retired most of the high levels in the 1990s. To begin, we're gonna quickly. Uh, I just want to quickly show you the packaging here. The packaging is just this very simple, thin cardboard box uh, with the ice cube packaging in the inside, uh, which is just a clear, you know, plastic tray kind of piece, uh, and it protects the model very well. Uh, all four, I, I bought four of these, and all four of these came to me, uh, basically new, uh, no damage whatsoever. So it's really awesome, and yeah, no instructions, nothing else. At least not the ones that I bought. So yeah, this packaging is more than sufficient. I think it'll protect your model very well. All right, now let's talk about some details. So we'll begin on the sides here, which is the most important one, part, part probably. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom in a certain area. So first off, you could tell that the uh, entire model is painted in this really nice silver color. It is not quite as metallic as the Walther's kind, the Walther's Proto kind. Uh, however, it is a really nice silver. I think it's it's pretty nice. I mean, these are not the newest cars. Keep that in mind. These were released about 10 years ago or more. I'm not really sure. Uh, but the silver is definitely pretty sufficient, at least for the time being. Uh, another thing to note is uh, the windows. The windows are really nice. Uh, they are tinted and they do have the really thin silver gaskets around them, which is really nice. Because, as you can see, um, the uh, you can see the split between the windows is very fine and done very well. I think it is just a painted silver line on the inside of the window. However, it is really fine and it looks really good. The uh, Another thing is the uh, lettering done on these are really nice too. The Santa Fe is very pronounced, very uh, crisp, as well as the number here, which is 718 done very well. I think that is pretty much it for the paint. Um, let's talk about the uh, actual detail itself. So we begin on the left side and look at these. These are amazing. I'm actually going to zoom out and just bring the car closer. Right here. So is there a way to zoom in here? There we go. These are some of the best um, grills I've ever seen. I mean, can you see that? The uh, little tiny lines between the grills is so fine and so well done. I don't know how Intermountain did these. I don't know if they're if they're etched or not. They I can't imagine them being plastic. They're probably etched, but these are some of the best grills. I think even better than the Walders ones, honestly. Um, they're so fine, which is amazing. I don't know how they managed to do it. But that is one key feature of these Intermountain cars. Uh, next up, we have these formed wire grab irons all throughout the car. There's actually more here, and there's a few more right here, and there, and there. So the grab iron's also done very well. Um, the uh, stirrup steps are also very fine. These, I do believe, are plastic. However, they're very well molded, and uh, they look really nice. They look almost metal or edged metal. One last thing is the trucks here. Oops. The uh, the trucks are plastic. However, they're they are they're separately applied detail on them to the point where they look you know they they have depth to them. They're not flat. They're not one piece molds. They are separately there are there are separately applied pieces to make it look like a legit truck, which is really nice. I think the truck is really well done. So overall, the details are really nice on the sides here. Very impressive. The only thing I can think they could possibly do better is the paint. But keep in mind this is an older model, so uh, expecting such nice paint is a bit unreasonable in my opinion. So anyways, let's move on to the sides now. The sides are, of the car are also really, really nice. You can see there's a whole bunch of, you know, uh, grab irons molded on, or not molded, sorry, separately applied, separately applied formed wire grab irons, metal grab irons, and they're rather durable. Uh, there's three on over, or there's four over here, there's a few more on this side. Uh, in fact, I could pull out another car here 
and you can see there's the other there's the other side of the grab irons. Again, very nicely done. Uh, the uh, diaphragms are unfortunately non-operational. However, they are very nicely detailed. As you can see, there's the springs. Um, there's also the uh, on top. There are these you know leaf springs on top. So the the diaphragms look really nicely detailed. There's also separately applied uh, when the glass. Um, so they're really they look really nice. However, they don't operate. Uh, fortunately, though, if you try to couple these two together. As you can see, the um, the gap between them is very minuscule. There is a very slight gap, small gap, but that is, in my opinion, negligible. I think it looks really nice. So yeah, and I don't think it really impedes an operation. As you can see, it has a rather long swing. So the non-operating diaphragms is not a big deal in my opinion. It is just a slight bit of a shame, but. Anyways, <laughs> last thing to note is the coupler boxes. So these coupler boxes are actually mounted on the truck, as you can see. Um, that is one thing that kind of gives away its age. Another thing besides the paint is that the coupler boxes are not body mounted. Um, so that is one unfortunate fact, um, but I think it still works. I will definitely modify these to make them body mounted. I'll simply just cut, cut it, uh, split it, and then just you know glue it onto the, the base, maybe as a screw or something. But yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, but that's pretty much for the end detail. Let's take a look at the underframe and the roof. Okay, so the underframe. Uh, I have it laid on this microfiber cloth, so the sides shouldn't be damaged. But the underframe, as you can see, is very minimal. <laughs> There's nothing underneath here, quite frankly. And uh, it's honestly not a big deal because these side shroudings actually do cover up the, bot the bottom, so you actually can't see anything. In fact, if I place it on the table here, you can see there's such a small little gap that you won't be able to see, you know, anything underneath any there anyways. But they don't have anything down there, and it's a bit of a shame. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit, but again, it's not a big deal. You don't notice it. Um, the Walders ones also actually had nothing underneath there. There is a kind of a plastic shrouding that kind of hides the bottom too. It's just a black shrouding, but um, this is not a big deal. I think it's fine. Um, but just keep in mind there's something in there. Uh, the, as far as the wheels go, these are plastic trucks, so there are no pickups, as you can tell. And these are Intermountain 36-inch wheels, which, as you know, Intermountain uh, metal wheels are very famous for how well they roll and, you know, how nice they look. So, these are really nice wheels, uh, but no pickups or anything like that, so obviously there's no lighting inside this car. Quick look at the roof. Flip this around. Um, again, nothing really to talk about here. It is just a very simple, uh, you know, uh, steel... Uh, steel uh, corrugated steel roof, one piece, no grab iron, and stuff like that. But there was nothing in the prototype anyway, so I don't expect much from there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the. That's pretty much it for the outside details. Let's take a quick look, a really quick look at the interior. As you can see, the interior is just a single piece of uh, plastic molded in a light blue color, which is really nice. I do like the blue. Uh, as you can see, it's just a whole bunch of seats. I believe this there is 72 seats or 68. I'm not sure. I should have done some research ahead of time. But anyways, there are seats inside this thing. Uh, in the bottom, there should be a lavatory uh, and some other seating. Um, baby bag and also baggage. But uh, yeah, the, the interior is really nice. Uh, though the coach one doesn't really do its justice. Let's take a quick look at the dining car here, actually. You can see inside there, there's actually tables and there's seats, which is really nice. Um, again, it's molded in one color. Everything is just light blue. Um, let me actually find a better way to do this. There you go. Yeah, you can see the seats and the tables. All light blue, but I think it's pretty nice. Uh, it's the, the dining car is definitely more noticeable because uh, the 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 um, tables are more noticeable. As you can see, even from a further distance, you can still see the interior. And uh, yeah, it's uh, really nice though. The interior it looks good. Um, it's sufficient. It's I I would prefer more colors, but um, yeah, I think it's fine the way it is. Anyways, that's pretty much it for these cars. Um, for a last little bit, let's put these on the track and see how they run. But other than that though, I think that's pretty much for the review. So yeah, let's get to that. All right, so I brought the four cars that I got uh, downstairs to the basement where my layout is. And the very first thing you notice is that this thing is super duper free rolling. It literally rolls like a freight car. Uh, super nice. Uh, and it's due to because, it's simply because there's no pickups or anything like that. It's plastic trucks, free rolling, you know, intermountain quality wheels. And that results in a very free rolling car that has very little, you know, resistance. Uh, so you can pull a long train of these and without any issue. Um, that being said, um, I have the four cars which I bought. I bought three of these coaches and one diner car, um, in all, all uh, Intermountain. And I'm gonna couple them up to the three Santa Fe, uh, Walder Santa Fe cars that I have. Uh, that's the common baggage, the common RPO, and the special Walder's uh, El Capitan made um, transition car. 
that goes from the, uh, this is a dorm car, baggage dorm, and it has a little hump on the end that connects to the Intermountain car that we connect to. And the very, and you know, like, it's pretty obvious, I guess it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it's very obvious in person that this thing is a lot more shinier. It has that metallic finish that's really nice, you can see the reflection on my hand, sort of, whereas this one just has nothing. Yeah, so this this finish is definitely better, but keep in mind these are really old cars, and for their time they're honestly fine. Uh, not to mention the fact that they're cheaper. These, you know, the Walters um, high-level cars cost like 120 bucks these days on on eBay. Uh, these go for about I don't know, like 70, 80. But anyways, yeah, they're cheaper. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Besides that, though, the details actually <laughs> work really well. The Walters ones aren't honestly much more detailed than these, um, so they actually fit in pretty well. Anyways, uh, with that all being said, let's get this train started. Alright, I got my Broader Limited Paragon 2 Santa Fe uh, 484 Northern, the 3751 Class Northern. This one in particular is 3763, because uh, then I, ca I cannot afford 3751. Um, so anyways, I have this engine on the layout, and I have uh, the two uh, Walther's head-end cars, as well as the four Intermountain cars. I unfortunately had to take this car off, because this car I just really can't navigate my curves, and I haven't modified it yet in order to afford it to do so. Um, if you guys didn't know, I have really tight curves, and I know these cars look terrible on it, but uh, I don't have a bigger space, unfortunately, and I really like accurate cars. I'm kind of a rivet counter in that sense, just a little bit. Um, and I usually modify my Weathers cars, Walther's cars, but that one I haven't modified yet, so that one's not going to be on the train. But in any case, this should give you a rough idea. It is a very unprototypical El Capitan uh, set. Uh, usually there's a lot more other cars in the set, um, including an observation, a lounge, and etc. But, and also it's not usually pulled by steam loco, it's usually pulled by diesel. But anyways, um, here we go. So, I think it'll do the trick as far as just seeing how they run. Alright, so let's get her steamed. Alright, so concluding thoughts. Uh, these cars are actually really impressive, especially considering when they were made. Um, if you could get them for about 60 to $70, I'd say that's fairly reasonable, uh, because the Walters ones are going for much, much more. And uh, these are honestly really solid substitutes, as long as you don't want, uh, as, as long as you don't mind there's no lighting, and, or you don't, you know, alright, yeah. As long as you don't mind having no lighting, and having a few less details and not having the plating, I think these are really nicely detailed and great for the price. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, I uh, hope this review was helpful, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!